viewers welcome to akshay vlogs and crafts today let's see lakshmi narayanan mandir at kasipilai kampung this place i have been to this place few times i like this place very very much because it's very calm very peaceful and very divine let's go into the story the history the four fathers of the present northern indian punjabi gujarati and sindhi community of kuala lumpur migrated to this country then known as malaya in search of greener pastures in the early years of the 20th century most of them came as traders and businessmen and many established themselves as successful entrepreneurs in the early years few of the more enterprising immigrants got together and set up the sanatan dharma sabha of kuala lumpur to act as an umbrella for the religious and cultural activities of the community the sri lakshmi narayanan temple had its humble beginnings in the year 1921 in a small single story terrace house on the banks of the gomba river in a settlement known as gomba lane in the heart of kuala lumpur the temple was often affectionately referred to as the gomba lane mandir initially the premises were occupied by the temple for a small monthly rental but the members of the sabha decided to pass the hat around and soon bought over the building names such as kesamar ramlal lal chand amarnath paras ram and rakta ram come to mind as the founding fathers of the temple Colorful stories have been told of how the then president of the Sabha vowed to plunge into the waters of the Gomba River if sufficient funds were not collected within one month to pay for the purchase of their premises. Needless to say, with the gener- generosity and religious devotion of members of the community, the need to fulfill the vow did not arise. The Sri Lakshmi Narayan Temple inevitably became the center of all religious and cultural activities of the Hindu Punjabis Gujaratis and Sindhis of Kuala Lumpur. A Hindi school was set up adjoining premises under the management of the Hindi Parsha Sabha. All major Hindu festivals are celebrated at the temple. The weekly highlight was the Sunday morning program which will culminate in the open air langar or lunch on the banks of the gomba river the temple's building was one of the few that survived the great gomba lane fire which razed the settlement in the 1950s in the early 1970s the whole area was acquired by the government for further development in line with the kuala lumpur city plan as a result the temple had to be relocated to a small rented house in another settlement com- called Kampong Kasi Pillai the sacred statues of the lord were transferred in possession with much pomp and splendor to the new building in the mid 1970s ambitious plans began to unfold to construct a grand new temple building that would be nothing less than a landmark for Kuala Lumpur and a symbol of pride for Sanatan Dharma In 1975 under the able presidentship of Sri Makanla Saigal a plot of prime land was purchased in the Kampong Kasipile area a large scale effort was made to raise funds and construction work began on the new Sri Lakshmi Narayan temple building the effort and dedication of the devotees bore fruit with the opening of the new temple premises in 1982 This is a great place for spiritual evolution and Sunday preaching and arati is great. The Om chanting at the end is also very nice. The food served is basic but it is very tasty and nice. Sometimes there are meditation session talks also organized here. The idols are very beautiful. There are a lot of colorful paintings. crafted on the walls around the temple there are shani dev and navagraha mini temples in the complex this temple takes about 15 minutes from kl central to reach the big temple the temple has large premises and ample parking 
people mostly visit temple on sunday afternoon and tuesday evenings it's a very great place of worship for all it is also one of the largest temples in southeast asia this temple holds religious services educational classes as well as festivals like holi and navratri i have been many times to this place it is a very very nice place we love the place very much i have taken my children there too my children love to run around the place the place is full of carpet with red color and it is looks very grand and very divine there's not many people there and the place is very quiet and relaxing we can keep on looking at the god and we no need to go in queues or in lines to see this god and goddess it's very nice and i love this place very much i've been uh, there's a orphanage nearby where we have been there are many children there too we have brought some things for them previously and uh, uh, the children always enjoys to run here and run there we love watching them as we go there the food prepared here is very delicious they put a lot of ghee and we also sometimes got laddu from there as prasadam that's what we have experienced so far once my friend's uh, daughter's wedding my mom's friend's daughter's wedding we went her name is sadhana uh, the wedding function was very nice and the hall since it was very big there were many people a lot of crowds and uh, it was very nice and enjoyable if you go by the train we can see this temple at the back um in the road we have to go inside as uh, we can't see it in the main road previously there was only krishna and uh, uh, goddess radha later on they added few more uh, marble statues which looks very very nice now i see from the internet there are a lot of wall paintings and decorations and new goddess are added they also have facebook where they have uh, videos we can see so all let's all pray to this god and goddess and have their darshan if possible every month every day okay viewers thank you bye bye